All right, guys, welcome back. So this is the fifth installment of my Illustrator CC tutorial on how to illustrate or vectorize a car. And in today's tutorial, we are going to cover the lower grill and fog lights. So we're gonna do that by starting a new layer and we are gonna call this bumper grill. We're just gonna jump right on into it. And dark green, that's not a very good color to be working with on this dark navy blue car. So we're gonna choose grass green. So I'm just gonna start by drawing kind of a base shape so I know where I am. And we are using the pen tool again, surprise, surprise. Select a nice dark color for that. And that doesn't quite line up with this uh, top part over here. So I will take my direct selection tool or A on your keyboard and just kind of play around with these shapes a little bit so that they line up exactly how you want them. Just kind of touching every point to see uh, if, if I'm good position or if I need to adjust it. All right, so now let's draw this plastic piece down here that has this honeycomb type pattern in it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw just the main piece of plastic, right? We're just gonna draw that. It's gonna be kind of a light gray. And then on top of that, we are going to add all those little shapes, all those little hexagons. All right, so that's look, that looks good. We'll turn that off so we can see what we're doing. And now I'm just gonna draw, draw in these little hexagons. Pick a nice dark color for that. And then I'm just going to hold Option and drag and release to make a copy of that hexagon. Sometimes I'll go back in with the direct selection tool and adjust the shape just a little bit to fit that particular opening. So again, option click or alt on a PC and you click and hold and drag to make a copy. There's no sense in drawing each one of these over and over again. All right, now once you have those drawn, Zoom out, take a look at your work, and that looks really good. Looks a little more realistic. We can do better. So let's go back in and draw in each one of these kind of half, half hexagon shapes. And these don't have to be perfect by any means. In fact, sometimes the imperfection is what makes it so unique and so custom. This isn't a computer generated drawing. So now we will add a shadow over the top of this, kind of similar like we were doing with the highlights on the windows with the gradient. We're gonna do the same thing here, but with black for the shadows. So we're going to fill this path that we just drew with a gradient. And up in the gradient dialog box, we'll change both sides to black and set one side's opacity to zero. So now you can go in with your gradient tool or G on your keyboard and adjust that shadow how you like. And then I will zoom back out again and that is looking a lot more realistic. So let's go back and or let's start on the passenger side here. And we'll call this grill, uh, grill passenger. I usually name my layers based on the side of the car it's on, not what side's facing me. So in this case, this is the passenger side. So I'm just taking a look, seeing where to start, where the most important places to start are. So I think I'm gonna draw a path that is for the overall shadow, kind of the, like the, the last path we just drew for the center portion. This is kind of the same path. So once this path is drawn, I'll turn it off in the layers palette. And now I'll go back and I'm going to draw a secondary shape 
this I will also turn off. These will come back to play later. Don't worry about them now. Okay, so these are a little tricky. They're not exactly like the last hexagons we drew. They're a little darker on the top, but we wanna make sure that we capture that whole shape. So now that that's drawn, I'll make a copy of it by holding Option, clicking, getting that out of the way. Now I'm gonna drag this down, make a copy on top of this. Now I'll use the Pathfinder and select minus front. That'll leave me with this wonky top part, this, this weird shape. And so what we'll do with that is I'm gonna change that to a really rich, deep black. And that hexagon we copied earlier, bring that back up on top, and then I'm gonna make sure that that is underneath the full hexagon. So now we have these two, but you can tell that it's darker on top. You're emulating the shadow. So we'll just copy and paste these, just like we copied and pasted the ones on the center portion of the grill. At least all of the whole ones. And now I'll move some that will fall off of this plastic part. But instead of using the Pathfinder, since this is kind of like two shapes on top of one that, we're keep, that we keep copying over and over, it's a group, I'm just gonna make sure that this is selected and then I'm gonna bring up the eraser tool. That's Shift E. And then with each one of these paths selected, it has to be selected. I can go through with the eraser tool and just remove what I don't need. If you've been using Illustrator for a while, this is kind of big, big deal because many previous versions of Illustrator didn't have an eraser tool. So this is kind of nice. I can modify each one of these shapes to fit where it lives in the grill. So just two more shapes left to do and don't forget you have to have the shape you're trying to erase part of selected in order for the eraser tool to work. Now the ones over there where the fog light where the fog light is, we don't need to worry about that because we're we're going to build that fog light on top of all of those all of those shapes. So it's good to unlock some other layers. Use your eyedropper tool to just get the colors right so the colors match. Now I have the same gray for the same type of material. All right, let's start drawing the fog light. So we'll take our pen tool and I'm just going to start by drawing from the bottom up. So I'm going to layer different paths on top of each other to get the effect. So I'm going to start with this shadow, which appears to me to be on the very bottom. And sometimes you can't see with all these other things. So I'm just going to turn all of this other stuff off that I don't need to see right now. finish drawing this black part. Now the top of this doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be layering more paths on top of it. So once that's complete, you can select that black color that you've already been using for the dark shadow. And then now we are going to come over to the, uh, we're going to turn the rest of these off so that we can see. And then I'm going to come over and grab the marquee tool, the, the round shape tool, and just draw a series of ovals on top of one another. And you really just need to focus on the, the shapes that are like clearly defined. Don't try to create something that's not there. And that looks good. Again, this is a very small detail on the car, so you should try to make it look perfect, but again, the imperfections are what make each one of these unique. So now I'm gonna select each one of these shapes and just kind of assign some arbitrary colors to these just so that I can see where they stop and start. These colors, I will change them later. This is really merely just to gauge where my shapes are. So I'm gonna come back in and that first shape that we drew, I'm going to drag that on top, all the way up to the top. 
And then I'm going to drag it below all of those new round shapes that we just drew for the fog light. And that shadow piece is going to sit on top of the plastic grill. So I'm just going to use my gradient tool to make sure that that is perfect. Zoom out and that looks really good. It's looking pretty realistic. So now let's we're going to select all of these and you can do this over in the layers palette too by clicking the right side there and we'll group those all together, turn them off, get them out of the way. And then take this the center circle there and basically make it the bright white color of the of the fog light. Now don't don't choose bright white, but a similar bright color. And now I'm just going to use the pen tool to come in and draw these darker shadows. Just very rough shapes. We'll switch the fill with the stroke and move that up. And then I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to select just a random color somewhere in here. That, that looks good. No, that's too brown. Okay. Actually, you know what? I like the dark black. Okay. That's looking pretty good. So now let's pick a couple of these other shapes and we'll draw them down here. Good. Now this shape, I'll, I'm going to draw, but uh, I'm gonna, when I'm done, I'm going to drag it down below those other ones. Perfect. So now it's coming together a little, a little better. Again, the more kind of fluid these reflections can be, the more realistic your lights will look. Try not to focus on, on drawing harsh lines. So now I'm gonna draw almost like a half, half a circle up here, and we're going to do the same treatment we used on the windows with the white gradient. So white on both sides, with one side's opacity set to zero. It's a fog light, so it should have a little bit of a reflection on it to make it appear like there's glass down there. That looks pretty good. Zoom out, check that out. And it, when it's zoomed out like this, that looks perfect. That looks completely realistic to me. And there you have it, guys. The lower, the, the lower grill on the bumper and the fog lights are done. Next up, we're gonna cover the headlights. And then after that, we're going to do side mirrors and then we'll move on to the wheels. I know a lot of you have been very anxious and asking me about the wheels and how to draw wheels and they're coming guys. Um, it is something that I personally save till the very end of my illustrations and I'm just taking this series of tutorials through from the beginning to the end. So if you're interested in more Illustrator CC tutorials and other car related nonsense, consider subscribing to my channel. And if you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. It really does help. And I will catch you guys in the next one.